Hi folks, been a long time, I know, and I apologize for that. Uh, my buddy Steve came by, and as you can guess, he found himself yet another sound craftsman. No idea where they're all coming from. But anyway, this is a sound craftsman A2502. I believe it's 125 watts a channel, and it's got some problems. Um, I tried hooking it up while Steve was here. I had the speaker terminal connected um, left and right when it should have been left and right side by side. I took a better look after he left, and now both channels look bad instead of one channel having nothing and another one having some noise. Um, he said it sounded okay at low volume, but when he cranked it up, he had problems. And I've already got the cover off and taken a look. I have a pretty good idea what the problem is. But uh, anyhow, let's take a look at it together. I'll show you what I found. Okay, so I'm going to focus on the front panel here. And if you look at that, it looks like everything's okay. Uh, I've got the signal generator connected, distortion analyzer. And as we turn it up, it looks good. We can drive it all the way to clipping on the left channel. Drive it all the way to clipping on the right channel and do both of them. So just look at the meters, it looks okay. But let's take a look at the uh, scope and distortion analyzer and we'll get a better idea of what the problem is. Okay, so I have the volumes on, on zero on the amplifier. I'm going to turn the signal generator off. And that's what we get. So let me slow down the time base a little. And yeah, that's what we have under no signal conditions. So we're going to take a look at the power supply because this is affecting both channels. Uh, by the way, if we just go back to uh, this and turn the signal on, you can see we get this. So we can get some signal out of here. Not a lot. But it does look like it's working, and, and even half a watt will give you sound. But uh, it's definitely got some problems. So let's take a look at the power supply, and I'll show you what I found. One of the things I have belatedly realized is while I have often shown what malfunctions look like on the oscilloscope, I have rarely, if ever, shown people what the malfunction sounds like. Now, some of these units won't power up or they're stuck in protection and there's really nothing to hear. But in other cases, there is. And this is one of those. So I want to show you what it would sound like if you owned this amplifier and turned it on and heard this. Now, it's really hard to hear, but so I'm going to put the microphone up to the speaker. But we got some pretty serious hum out of both speakers. So they're both doing this. Now you can see that we have uh, no signal in right now, but I'm going to start uh, some YouTube safe music and let's see what we get here. And you notice that the bass notes are really where we hear the distortion. The bass notes are what take a lot more power. It takes a lot more power to move a woofer than it does to move a tweeter. So that's why you're going to notice this being more pronounced when you have uh, low-end frequencies. Now I learned by turning this off that it sends a tremendous pop through the speakers and blew one of my speaker fuses. So I'm not going to do that again. You're just going to have to take my word for that because I really don't want to blow any more fuses. And to give you an idea of what that pop is, I am going to uh, turn this off now with the right speaker in the meter on DC volts. And now that I've turned it off, we have 14 volts on there. That's what popped my fuses. 
So just wanted to show you that. It'll eventually drain down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up this capacitor here with clip leads. And then we're going to turn it back on and you'll see how much better it sounds. Okay, schematic says that we should have a positive and negative 68 volts. So if we look here at this capacitor, and I get my hand out of the way, so maybe it focuses. Here, let's just do this. All right, so we get 66.4 here. And we get about 53.54 here. So we got a problem, and the problem is, let's go to AC volts and take a look at our caps again. Now, if filtering is good, we should have a very low AC voltage. Like this says zero. And if we go to the other one, we get about 11.6 volts of ripple. So this capacitor is bad. So I'm going to just clip lead one in because I don't have replacements. I'm going to have to order them. We're going to replace both of them. These are 11,000 microfarads at 75 volts. We're going to go 12,080 for our replacements. But this is most likely what our problem is. So I'm going to stop the camera. I've got a... Uh, 10,080 volt, so we're going to just clip this in and see if it clears up our trouble. I have a 10,000 microfarad 80 volt capacitor, and I just have jumper leads here. And it's very, very important if you do this that one, that the capacitor in the unit is not shorted, and two, that you observe polarity. Failure to observe polarity can cause very bad things to happen. The capacitor can overheat, be destroyed, explode. Um, so, word to the wise, double check your polarity before you power it up. So I'm going to turn this back on. And now we're going to place that same track again. And my CD player's on. There we go. Now listen for when the bass comes in. Okay, my speakers will not handle the power of this amplifier. This amplifier is 125 watts per channel. But you notice that there's no distortion now. And I'll show you what all this looks like on the analyzer, but I wanted you to hear it. Like I said, I've been remiss at doing this in the past. All right, I have a clip lead, a capacitor clip leaded in. If you look, and I'll just raise the camera for a moment. If you look down in here, you see I've just got these taken off of this terminal on the capacitor, and I've got our clip leads here. And I'm going to focus on the distortion analyzer and the scope. And turn it on. We have a little signal. And you can see everything looks a whole lot better. And we're starting to make a little wattage here. So I'll crank it up. And we've got about 135 watts a channel a lot better so that's the whole problem this is one that would have been fixed by recapping but we see where the problem is and it was pretty easy to find once you saw all the crap on the scope it was pretty much a dead giveaway what the trouble was anyhow i'm going to connect the old cap back up and run it up and show you just how bad off this thing was Okay, so this is what we get, and if I try and crank it up, according to this, I should have full signal, but you can see the crap running through here, and we're putting out, it says 78 watts and 4 watts, 
Honestly, I don't really know what to make of what we're getting because there's so much noise in here. But uh, yeah, that was the whole problem. So the one of the filter caps is gone. The other one's probably not too far behind it. So I probably should have done this first and shown you exactly how bad off it was. But it's been a while since I've been out here. So uh, I'm going to measure these, order them, replace them, and give this back to Steve. There shouldn't really be anything else wrong with it. This, by the way, is a MOSFET amplifier. Um, Soundcraft's been having a few of these. This one is, like, like I said, I think about 125 watts a channel. You could see we got 135 out, albeit with a little bit more distortion than spec. So anyhow, this is a quickie, but uh, I just wanted to get back out there and just show you that I, I'm still around, okay? Thanks for watching, everybody. And as always, I like giving back to the community that's given me so much. Thanks a lot.